Hello and welcome. Today we are doing another question from Leak Code called Increasing Triplet Subsequence. It is a medium. Let's get started. Given an integer array nums, return true if there exists a triple of indices i, j, k, such that i less than j less than k, and nums of i less nums of j less nums of k. So we're looking for three numbers in which both the indices are increasing and the values. If no such indices exist, then we return false. Example one, we have an increasing input one, two, three, four, five, and we would output true. And there are multiple possible values for this, right? One, two, three, two, three, four, two, four, five. These are all valid and we would output true. Example two, here it's strictly decreasing, so it's the exact opposite of example one. While the indices are increasing, the values are not, so we return false. And example three, two, one, five, zero, four, six. Here again, multiple things would work, 2, 4, 6, 1, 4, 6, 0, 4, 6, and they're valid because the indices are increasing, and so are the values. These are some constraints, and there is a follow-up on the bottom that my screen is sort of blocking, basically asking if we can do this in linear time and constant space. So let's make sure we fully understand what this question is asking. We want both conditions to hold true. We want i less than j less than k and nums of i less than nums of j less than nums of k. For this first condition right here, this is always going to hold true if we iterate through a list like we usually do. We always start left to right when iterating through an array, right? So this will always hold true. We're always coming across indices bigger than ones we've seen before. However, for this one, this is something we'll have to check for. The value is always increasing. We need three numbers in total in which they are strictly in increasing order. So how are we going to do this? Well, let's take a look at an example. Say I have the following input. I have one, three, two, zero, one, two. Say this is my input, right? And if I traverse left to right, the indices are always going to be increasing, so I don't even need to make a check for this. I'm just going to concern myself with nums of i, nums of j, and nums of k. So I start at this very first index here, at index 0, and let's say I've seen this number and I'm moving on to this one right here. Well, now I see that this number is bigger than something I've seen before. So this could be my i, and this could be my j nums of i could be holding 1 and nums of j is now holding 3. This means any number that is greater than 1, so 2 or more, could be j, and any number 4 or more would be k, and at that point we would return true if we did find a number bigger than what's in nums of j right now. At that point we wouldn't even need to store in a third variable nums of k, we just return true. And if that's not the case, for example, if we don't find a number bigger than something we've seen before, what do we do now? So now we are at this number right here. We still have i being 1 and j being 3, and we are at 2 right here. Well, it's not bigger than for what we were expecting and hoping to find to return true, but it is between our nums of i and nums of j. It's not less than equal to nums of i, so instead, what we're going to do, since it is less than equal to nums of j, we're going to update j. j is now going to be 2. And what we're doing now is basically trying to decrease i and j as much as possible so k has a bigger range to be true. Instead of looking for a number 4 or greater to return true, now we just need to look for a number 3 or more, and we can return true. So that's what we are going to do. Anytime we come across a new number, if it is less than equal to what we have in nums of i, nums of i is this new number. If it is less than equal to nums of j, nums of j is this new number. If neither is true, we found our k and return true. So now we are at 0, and we see that this is less than what's in nums of i, so we're going to update nums of i to be 0. So i is now here. But wait a minute. i is greater than j, and we want this condition to hold true, right? Why is this going to work? Or will it be a problem? This is actually fine because to find a k, we want a number bigger than 2. And no matter how small i is, 
it's not really affecting when we look for a K. What does this mean? We only found a J because there was no number less than equal to nums of I, right? So this is our second part of the triplet. No matter how we change I, if J doesn't change, we are still using this one, two triplet. We're not using zero, two. So now that we've changed I, we see our next number. It is one. It's not less than equal to numbers of I, but it is less than equal to numbers of J. So we can now go ahead and change J. So instead of using one, two, our new triplet is going to be using zero, one. We're getting um, I and J as small as possible, right? So again, now we come across this number, two, and we see, hey, it's not less than equal to numbers of I, not less than equal to numbers of J. Now we return true. And this never would have happened if we had kept I and J to be one, two, because K would also be equivalent to J and we want a strictly greater than relationship. This is why we need to keep updating the numbers as we see them. So let's go ahead and code all of this up and run through one more example. So for num in nums, I'm going to be iterating through every single num in my input nums. If the number I'm on is less than equal to what's stored in nums of i, nums of i equals this new number. If it's not less than equal to nums of i, well now let's check for j. L if nums num less than equal to nums of j, nums of j equals this number. And if neither is true, we found our k and we return true. If we go through our entire list and do not return true, that means we never found our increasing triplet, we simply return false. And before we can finish, we need to initialize nums of i and nums of j. Since this is a less than equal to relationship, we want nums of i and j to be as big as possible. So what I'm going to do is have nums of i and nums of j both set to quote infinity. So let's go ahead and run this code. Let's see, oh, this should be num of j and num of i. Same here. Run code. Num of i is not defined. Okay, this should work now. Wrong answer. Let's see what happened. Okay, num of i is equal to num of j is equal to flow infinity for num in numbers. Num is less than equal to num of i. Num of i should be less than equal to num. There we go. Accepted and submit. and accepted as well. So talking about space and time complexity. For space, we only use two extra variables, so that is constant O of one. And for time, it's a one pass linear scan, so that's O of n. And before we leave, let's just do one more example to make sure we really understand what's happening. Let's do a quick run through of this one right here. So nums of i is zero. These s's, okay, num of j is equal to line. These are both initialized to infinity. <clears throat> so we start with our first number being here, and we go into this for loop. For number in nums, we start with two. Is two less than equal to infinity? Yes, so nums of i is now two. Moving on to the next element, one. Is one less than equal to two? Yes, nums of i is now one. At five, is five less than equal to one? No, we're now in this elif. Is five less than equal to what's nums of j right now? Infinity, yes, so nums of j is now five. Move on, we're at zero, so is zero less than equal to one? Yes, so we just update nums of i to be that number. Four, four is not less than equal to zero. Is it less than equal to five? Yes, yeah, so we update nums of j to be 4. At 6, 6 is not less than equal to 0, 6 is not less than equal to 4, and all we do is return true. And if this was not 6, it was 4 instead, we'd see that it is less than equal to j, so num of j would just stay 4, and we would have gone through this entire list and returned false. So this is how we are going to be solving this. 
If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, I will see you next time. Oh, <laughs>